together, growing in faith, changing communities. Dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you into this celebration of our lives, the celebration of the Word of God. And I, I strongly believe that the readings are absolutely powerful and beautiful. Jeremiah chapter 20 from verse 9 to from verse 7 to verse 9 and Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to verse 2. Allow me to highlight a few things in these readings. The first one coming obviously from Jeremiah. Jeremiah says to God, you, O oh God, have seduced me, and you have overpowered me. The seduction that Jeremiah talks about is a strong attraction in which the Lord has drawn Jeremiah to himself. And immediately I'm reminded of Jesus who says, once I'm lifted up on the cross, I will draw everything to myself. And so Jeremiah has fallen in love with God. His whole life, his whole vocation is inspired by the love that he has for God, by the zeal that he has for God. He is madly in love with God. And because of his love for God, because of his conviction in the love of God, he is able to withstand any and every attack and temptation in his life. And this is where, dear brothers and sisters, I think we should begin our relationship with the world, but also with God. Have I fallen in love with God? Have I come to realize who God is for me in my life? You will soon realize in the second reading when St. Paul writes to the Romans, there are four words that I would like to unpack. To offer, meaning offer your bodies, but offer yourselves. So the first word is to offer. The second word is to not conform. The third word is to be transformed. Do not conform, but be transformed. And the last word, it is to discern. But we're going back into Jeremiah, who is filled by God. And let us connect this love and this conviction that we find in Jeremiah and take the first word that St. Paul utters today when he says to the people, I urge you, dear brothers and sisters, by the mercy and the grace of God, to offer yourselves as a living sacrifice. John Paul the Great, St. John Paul the Great, has one of the most beautiful words that he coined when he speaks about self-donation. That I offer myself to God as a living sacrifice. That I give of who I am to God. Go back to what we've once heard. Who I am is a gift from God. And who I become is my gift to God. The offer tree that we offer to God, for me, goes a little bit deeper. Because for me, it acknowledges what God and what St. Paul are asking of us is that I give of the whole of me. The good and the not so good. The perfect and the imperfect, the rights and the wrongs. The Lord is expecting, the Lord is hoping that I can offer myself to Him. 
I offer to God that who I am and in the process of offering myself to God, there is hope for healing. In offering who I am to God, the Lord is able to do with me what I was not able to do for myself. The other thing that is closely related with the offer tree that St. Paul talks about today, he says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now there are two words I want to talk about there. Your bodies. My body, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. So what is it that St. Paul is asking of us? God is asking of us to give him a space within our lives. To give him time within our busy lives. To offer him a place where he can rest. Go back to the scriptures where Jesus says, the sparrows find a home. The foxes find holes, but the Son of Man has no way to lay down his life. Can I offer myself, my body, for the Son of Man? Go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 16. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock, that whoever listens and hears my voice opens the door. I will then come and live with that person. Let's look into our own lives. Is there space for God in my life? Is there space for God in my family? Is there space for God in our country? Is there space for God in our work? Is there space for God in our church? Can we sit open and say, Lord Jesus, come in. It is good for you to be with us. That's the first thing. Can we offer our families back to God? The second thing, St. Paul says, do not conform into this world. And for me, there is a great principle here. The ability to stand for the truth. It may be hurtful. And you may have lots of enemies. But are you able to stand for the truth? Are you able to stand for your convictions? Not in an arrogant way. Not in a manner that says, I'm right and I'm always right. It's my way or no way. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having discerned the plan and the will of God. Am I able to remain faithful to God, to the truth, to love, to family? Not to sway by the wind, not to move from pillar to post, not to be moved by every opinion. Can I stand for the truth? The third word, which also speaks to me, transformation. In my life, is there a space to be transformed? To acknowledge that I may be wrong. And even to acknowledge that I am wrong. And I'm willing to change. I am willing to do it differently. I am willing to be molded by God. To be like clay in the hands of a porter. To be broken. To be fixed. To be molded. And to be shaped. Am I willing to go through transformation? And I'm always reminded of John chapter 15, the pruning that Jesus talks about in that gospel. That sometimes our lives may have difficulties. 
that we may go through pains and tribulations, that we may go through sufferings, that we may have losses of our loved ones. And yes, it is painful, but can we allow these painful experiences to transform us? Not to harden our hearts, but to be transformed by the will of God. To realize that my life is becoming that which God wants me to be. That I am in the process where God is doing something new. How many of us in the church are aware that the church is being transformed? That the people of God are being transformed? That how we worship is being transformed? And how we believe in God, that too is being transformed. A good friend of mine, Father Grant Emmanuel, always harbor at this point. That in as much as it is good for people to come back to church, he always says, and I agree with him, he says we need a new spirituality. We need a re-entry into this. My dear brothers and sisters, having stayed away from churches for all these months, we need a new spirituality. We need a new way of being church. We need a new way of being human beings. I need to change. I cannot be the same person I was five months ago. After everything we've gone through, with the pain, the tribulation, the anxiety, the fear, the great loss, the mercy of God, we need to change. As people, as individuals, as societies, as a country, as communities, as families, and as church. The last word that is also important to me is discernment. To discern. To assess. To look at things as they happen. To ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I miss a good friend of mine, Father Emmanuel de Passos. He's dead now. He's with the Lord. Emmanuel de Passos, one of the greatest things he ever taught me, and he always believed in this. Never be too quick to give an answer. Sometimes you need to withdraw and to think things through. Sometimes we rush into the unknown. Sometimes we rush to utter words. Our mouths are always faster than our thoughts. And the man the apostles always, always took time to reflect. And yet, he was a brilliant man. And so I think what the Lord is inviting us to do is the gift of discernment. What is the plan and the purpose of God for us? For me as an individual, for you as a person, Many of us are harboring on things we are fighting, on things that may be important now, but later on you realize they were not important. Look at the things that we fought for a couple of months ago, and now those things are no longer important. We've grown to appreciate things differently. We've grown to become new people. And so we also ask the Lord to give us this gift of discernment. May the Queen of Heaven, Mother of Mercy, Seat of Wisdom, pray with us and for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, growing in faith, changing communities.